A 20-year-old man has been arrested from Noida over death threats to actor Salman Khan and Zeeshan Siddiqui, MLA and son of leader Baba Siddiqui. Mumbai police have taken Gufran Khan uh, into custody and shifted him into a transit remand. According to police sources, Zeeshan Siddiqui's office in Bandra received messages on Friday evening threatening Salman Khan and the MLA of uh, death unless they paid a ransom. A staff of Zishan Siddiqui's office had registered a police complaint and an FIR was filed. Police then identified Mohammad Tayyab as the man behind the threats and arrested him. Earlier, Mumbai police had arrested Sheikh Mohsin, a 24-year-old vegetable seller from Jamshedpur, over a threat message received by Mumbai Traffic Police's WhatsApp helpline. The threat message demanded 5 crore as ransom. So what is clearly becoming like a copycat menace. And uh, so what really is the way forward? Thank you so much Advaita Kala joining us now. We have Shashi Khan, former DGP of uh, Punjab, uh, someone uh, who has worked on Lawrence Bishnoi cases. Shahzad Khan is an Indian actor. We also have uh, Sunil Gupta, former Tihar jail spokesperson. Advaita Kala, beginning with you, it almost seems like a threat call or a WhatsApp message a day now in this case. Uh, yes, I think it's the times we live in, Maria, as, uh, as cynical as that sounds, because even ordinary people are not safe from threats, uh, be it on social media, be it on random uh, phone calls. We see examples of that taking place all the time. Very recently, we saw all the airlines getting those kind of hoax uh, threats yes. and the amount of money it's cost the airlines, not to mention the anxiety and the panic of just the general public who is trying to get from one place to the other during the holiday season. So this, unfortunately, is, is the times that we live in uh, because there are high-profile people involved. Of course, it makes it to the news. But this has become increasingly rampant. And I think it's very, very important that quick action is taken, like the identification uh, of this uh, person from Noida, which uh, where, the, where in the Maharashtra police and the UP police worked very well together and identified him. I think this is really the only way to end this, because we live in a time where everybody, irrespective of class, region, has access to the smartphone, has access to information on the internet where they can reach out and play up this kind of mischief. Okay, so uh, then, uh, uh, Shehzad Khan, is there a fear among the actors now, particularly after this, these repeated calls and, and the murder of Baba Siddiqui? Uh, thank you very much for having me on your show. Uh, to be very honest, the actors are continuing their job. Nobody is much uh, scared about it. See, if any actor is doing anything wrong, then he will be scared of. But if he is doing his work honestly, he will not be scared of anything. Unless such goons, such idiots, such uh, pr pranksters, you can say, they, they start harassing any actor, then there is a cause of tension and, you know, and then the police has to look into the matter. But as such, uh, the, the actors are not at all uh, scared about all these things. Yes, it happens. It's bad. It's very sad what is happening, what has happened. It's, uh, it shouldn't have happened. There was so much of peace and calm for so many years in uh, Maharashtra and Mumbai. And now all of a sudden these uh, uh, things are cropping up. And the very sad part is that we come to know a lot of things like this, these guys, I mean, uh, not this uh, goon who has been caught, or these, not these pranksters I'm talking about, but the main person has been supported by us by a certain party and all these things, you know, which is very, very sad. And that's how the other guys, like these young guys, 20-year-old guys, 18-year-old guys, who are getting, who are jumping into this because they think it's easy money. And in, uh, and, the, and the main, the root of, I think, of all this is unemployment. Hmm. Had these guys been employed, they would not have been calling up and, you know, uh, disturbing people and threatening people and, you know, making such prank calls. It's unemployment is one of the major reasons why, and everybody wants, and these guys want to make a quick buck. How can you make a quick buck like this? It's not the right way. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, and it's, stern, it all stern, starts very stern from... action should be taken. The concern is uh, Sunil Gupta, that it all starts from uh, Baramati Jail. There is Lawrence Bishnoi who is operating and his handler, uh, and, and he is actually there and his men are out 
doing these crimes. A number of them, of course, these are hoax calls as well. But Lawrence Bishnoi, how is he allowed to operate from inside the jail and run this entire Raj of sorts in multiple states? Yeah, you see, uh, Bishnoi is presently in the Gujarat jail, Baramati yeah. jail. And uh, there he is having mobile phone. This is a very strange thing that he is having mobile phone. Basically, you see, this is the tendency of the gangsters to possess the mobile phone inside the prison. They are having these mobile phone uh, with the connivance of uh, their caste. Uh, basically, you see, most of the gangsters are caste lord. Uh, uh, these gangs are on the basis of caste. And uh, they are getting the mobile phone with the uh, connivance of the disgruntled element of the, the, uh, the, uh, those caste who are working in the jail. Hmm. So... The first thing they are, uh, uh, I have seen uh, when I was also uh, working with Tihar, I have seen that each gangster, his first priority was to have the mobile phone so that he can head outside. He, uh, they used to send the uh, WhatsApp picture outside, video outside. They are enjoying but the. Gupta, what we were told was the regular checks that happen in these cells. What happened to that? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, you see, it. Uh, Prison is the state subject, and in Tihar, we are having uh, Tamil Nadu special police hmm. who are trained to check uh, such type of activities. But in Gujarat, I am told that they are not having such uh, specialized police, as a result of which uh, that is very small there where he has been kept. And as a result of uh, this, uh, you can say, laxity on the part of prison staff, they are enjoying these facilities in the jail. So, in the name of Lawrence Bishnoi and his uh, gang, uh, Shashi Kanji, there, is, there are multiple youth from uh, Jharkhand to Noida. All of them are making these threat calls. So, how does it actually work in terms of the real story? The question is, here is a gangster who is operating from jail and is giving the real threat calls and then there are these pranksters. Ah, yeah, serious matter, ma'am. Uh, I'll just say, sum it up in a couple of sentences. Whatever we are seeing is a basically a cumulative failure of our security agencies, external affairs, extradition, judicial system, everything. And to add it all, somehow or the other, this particular person is being glorified by a section of people and by a section of media. And more and more persons are jumping into it like what happened, you know, the aircraft things, that was the fox calls. People are just doing it. And this reminds me of the situation which we had in Punjab during the time of militancy. Sundry people, they had got the letter has printed in name of Babur Khalsa, this thing, this thing. And this thing is happening in Punjab and lots of other states also. In the name of this particular person, Bishnoi, they are extorting money almost all over the country. Not necessarily they mean any threat or a serious thing to the uh, actors or anybody, but it's just a quick way to extort money. And it is about the time when I say that we need a task force. What police does? They say, okay, case has uh, something has taken place. They are in a rush to wrap it up without going into the logic of the things. How it emanated, what are the links, et cetera, et cetera. Everyone is in rush to close the case and say, okay, we have finished it off. It's a serious matter. That's why I say it's a cumulative failure of our setup. These guys are sitting in eight countries all over the world. Hmm. Whatever external affairs is doing, what CBI is doing, what Interpol is doing, what our state police is doing, what intelligence team, lots of questions. There's no end to these questions. My only one thing I'll say is about the time that we have a centrally monitored task force so that there's a coordination amongst various states and agencies without which I don't think this problem can be solved. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I'm going to come back to Advaita Kala here. Advaita, as you said that we are being cynical because of the times that we are living in uh, and, and there is this entire angle which has been brought by uh, Shehzad Khan of unemployment and the perhaps that's the reason why these unemployed youths are making these calls. Uh, you know, I feel that there's much more in the head and it's also about sudden fame that you get when you make a call of this nature to a superstar like Salman Khan. Yes, 
yes, and also a criminal bent of mind. Uh, let's criminal not make excuses yes. for these people, like huh. you know, they're unemployed or they're depressed or uh, family life is not great. I don't see why we have to make excuses for people who have a criminal bent of mind. This is clearly somebody who thinks that this is a way of gaining notoriety, if not necessarily fame, and also getting uh, paid without having to do any work except dial a number. So he's trying his luck and has a, definitely has a criminal bent of mind. I'm very glad that he has been caught. And I think it's very important uh, to be aware in these times. Uh, yesterday's Man Ki Baat, uh, where Prime Minister, he highlighted a particular scam online where there's a man dressed as a cop. Imagine that the impunity. He's dressed as a police officer and he's calling up a person in Karnataka and trying to get all kinds of details from him and threatening him. And, uh, you know, I mean, it was, it took the prime minister to highlight that this kind of impersonation and thuggery and cheating is is going on in the country. Hmm. So I think I'm definitely on, on board with the idea that there needs to be a central cyber agency that can, and because there are no state lines in these kind of crimes. Somebody sitting, like we saw with uh, this chap in Noida calling up Mumbai. So there is really no uh, state lines here. So you need an agency that is not bound by essentially state lines and can go across the country and investigate these crimes speedily. I'm afraid we're only going to see an increase in them because the technology will aid it, be it VPN or whatever, what have you. So we're going to see a lot more of them. In fact, in the UK, in the airline threat case, they're now saying that most of the calls came from the UK. Hmm. Now, how is that going to happen, uh, be handled? Because it's an international issue and it's an all likelihood somebody who is not a citizen of India. So these, these are getting very complex. We need a mechanism that can tackle this. So then are we not prepared, Shashi Khan? You know, it needs we are absolutely cross-country collaboration like said, among states. Then how do you do that? I, mean, I said that, like the ma'am also said out there, that what we need, the tendency of the state police forces or any agency for that matter is to not to share the information or intelligence or whatever it is. We need a centrally monitored task force and only then how these eight goons they went to seven, eight different countries. How did they get the passports? What the immigration was doing? They are sitting in their prison houses, operating in their phones. How come? It happened in Punjab, it happened in Jaipur, it happened in Delhi, and now it's happening in uh, Gujarat. So in such time, we have a central, central kind of uh, a group, a task force. It's a very difficult thing because this person has now almost, uh, all of, he's got links all over, different agencies, different countries, etc., etc. It needs to be centrally monitored, and this thing has to be brought to an end. Otherwise, I fear that uh, this thing is going to get out of the hand. Thank you. Yes, and it requires various agencies which are supposed to be doing their job like jail supervisors and superintendents are supposed to ensure that uh, you know under trial prisoners do not have access to mobiles they also do their part sunil gupta that's also essential you know while it may sound all very you know that this is how it works it has to be stopped yeah yeah basically you see most of the jail hmm. the staff is not trained no uh, proper training is given to the staff Plus, uh, adding to the woe of the prison administration is that there is uh, the uh, vacancy to the extent of 35% of the sanction, uh, sanction posts. Mm. So, with lesser uh, jail people, with, with lesser staff and untrained staff, I, I think these uh, two uh, are the biggest uh, barrier in uh, not uh, stopping these uh, gangsters to use mobile phones. So, Shahzad, uh, coming to you, since you say that, uh, you know, film stars and the film industry is looking at it as business as usual, nothing is going to be impacted. But one family has certainly been, uh, you know, the fact is that Salman Khan's entire family, including his father, they're not stepping out. Salim Khan has not stepped out for his morning walks. So, there is that fear that in what form will Lawrence Bishnoi gang will strike, nobody really knows. Obviously, he, uh, all this has been done with him, so his entire family, his friends, and he lost a very dear friend of his. Uh, but uh, there is more to what can see the eyes, and uh, there are rumors in the market also, and then on YouTube and all this, that 
his very close friend who was uh, uh, just Mr. Baba Siddiqui, that there was some certain land disputes also. And I saw one of the uh, interviews of uh, Mr. Salim Khan, uh, Salman Khan's dad. Uh, he was saying that uh, uh, Baba Siddiqui's murder is not uh, or any way related to because of Salman. Now, the, these things are also there. So no, we, the main thing is what has we have to do is to stop all these things. And how does one stop this? We have to, as rightly said, as we have two people from the uh, from the police on the, on our panels on our panels, they know it better because I have I had also done a show in two thousand thirteen or fourteen uh, as Tihar Idol. So I used to also go in and out of the I go and for you know, and there I used to see that the way they check people and and. The main thing is that the, as 35% uh, people are less overworking and plus the uh, people over there, they compromise. You see, money uh, money is the biggest thing. And money talks and, you know, and it makes everything go on. So we have to just see that how we can control these things and uh, people should be, and these people who get caught, these people should be given such severe punishments such severe punishments that people should get a lesson by seeing that what has happened to them. Even if they think of doing such things, hmm. they will be treated in the same manner. That's, that this is a very important thing which needs to be done by the uh, police force and by the government and all these steps have to be taken. Rather than glorifying these uh, goons, you know, they should be given okay, the I'm most severe punishments. I'm just enough time for Advaita's uh, final word. Advaita, you know, because there are concerns about this copycat menace which is uh, playing out, of course, the hoax calls that the airlines received and a continued threat to Salman Khan. Uh, you know, awareness, one side, yes, but centralized functioning of multiple government agencies. It's essential. I think in a country like ours, with all the kind of interstate politics that goes on, uh, you need an agency that that can rise above the politics, that can actually be tasked with solving these cases, with investigating them, with having freedom of movement, with having a single point of a reporting, because even the reporting structure gets so complicated sometimes with investigative agencies. We've seen it all all the time. You know, the mm. the uh, the state police doesn't want to cooperate with the CBI. The CBI has a problem with the, another agency. So I think you really need a central agency which supersedes these kind of hierarchies uh, does, and, and the reports in directly to maybe the home minister in a, in, in a case like this, although the cops and everything else comes under him. But, but yes, it's also divvied up into different state agencies. So I think it's very important to have, you know, something like the FBI, I've been saying this for the longest time. Uh, I know the CBI kind of plays that role, hmm. but I feel with cybercrime, which is so specialized, uh, it's uh, it's a new technology. It's only going to get more complex. You have the whole complexity of the dark web and how Bitcoin plays its role in crime. I mean, this is a whole other arena, which definitely there has to be training, uh, there has to be skilling uh, to deal with this and international cooperation as well. So I think it needs a separate agency. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Advaita Kala, for joining us, uh, Shashikant, Shahzad Khan and Sunil Gupta.